Have you gotten your uh, older back from camp yet? No, uh, he won't be back till August. Oh my. And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us. Today, we're going to be talking about clean air and the environment. Yes, uh, we're off to a very hot start for the summer, and we're always worried about where we stand in relation to clean air requirements. And we've got two guys coming on today to talk to us about that and what each of you can do to try to help remedy uh, a somewhat dangerous situation. And we'll get to it. You're watching The Verdict, and we'll be right back. Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guests. Today to my right is Miles Talbert making his third visit to, to The Verdict. Miles uh, did his undergraduate work at Stanford University where he graduated Phi Beta Kappa, then went on to Harvard University to do his law work, graduated in 1991. And while there, he uh, won the uh, prestigious uh, Ames Moot Court competition. After that, he became a, a practitioner in the environmental law area serving with the Department of Justice, the state of Oklahoma, and in private practice. And uh, he is uh, joining us now. Miles, really glad to have you back. Thanks, glad to be here. Third visit. Third time's a charm. All Third right. time, <laughs> got that right. <laughs> All right, to my left is uh, Doug Rex. Doug uh, is the director for Association of Central Oklahoma Governments in the transportation and planning area. He did his undergraduate work at Memorial University in Newf Newfoundland, Canada did uh, his master's work in urban planning at the University of Kansas. Uh, he joined ACOG in uh, 1996, and we're sure glad you're here in Oklahoma okay. with us. Thank you, sir. Very excited about being here. Glad to have you. Appreciate it. Miles, more and more Oklahomans are interested in the environment. I know we held a forum on June 17th at Oklahoma Christian University called the Clean Air Forum. Can you kind of give people a, a wrap-up of what took place there? Absolutely. Uh, you know, this summer, 2009, is, may well be our last summer in attainment for the ozone standard. And so the beginning of the summer seemed like the right time to have a good discussion mm -hmm. about what we can do to stay in attainment and what it would mean to be out of uh, attainment. Uh, the group that pulled it together was a, is a group called CORA, the Central Oklahoma Regional Advocacy Alliance, which is really just a confederation of chambers uh, in Central Oklahoma. 
the Oklahoma City Chamber was involved. Uh, great bunch of speakers. Doug was there. I was there. Uh, but also uh, Steve Thompson, who is the executive director of the Department of Environmental Quality, had a lot of good information. And then Leanne Burnett and Mark Walker, two lawyers at Crone Dunleavy, were there to talk about the legal implications of what it means to be out of attainment. And what did we learn? What are the, what, among what are the legal implications? Well, uh, the main legal uh, uh, implication is it's going to be tougher to do business in, Oklahoma, mm. in central Oklahoma. Uh, it will mean that um, if you want to start a business or grow a business in particular, you're going to have to have more stringent controls on your emissions. And the hardest thing is going to be you're going to have to find somebody elsewhere in the area to reduce their emissions by 10% more than you're increasing your emissions. Good grief. That's, that sounds difficult and complicated. I know we want to get more into that with Doug. Mm. But uh, in general, how are we doing on compliance compared to other regions? Well, we have historically done pretty well. And we being central Oklahoma. I should say that. We being central Oklahoma. You know, mm. one of the things that the chamber has long, uh, you know, trumpeted as one of our advantages as a place to do business is we're better. You know, we are, have been in attainment. But we really are on the razor's edge. And in fact, there's one way of looking at it that says we're out. I mean, if you look at the last three years, which is the, the rolling average that the EPA has set, uh, we, by those numbers in central Oklahoma, we're out. Uh, but what Governor Henry did was write the EPA and said, essentially, why don't you put off making the decision, the formal decision, for one more year? Give us one more summer. And the EPA has not said yay or nay on that, but we're taking advantage of it and hope to have a better summer this year. Can you simplify something for me and yeah. probably our viewers? What do you mean by attainment or non-attainment? Well, the EPA, the EPA has a list which, is, which people call the dirty air list, uh, which is the uh, list of metropolitan areas that have sufficiently low enough levels of ozone. And the way it's figured is, the f it's a little complicated and I don't mean to make it so, uh, <laughs> the fourth highest reading um, for each of uh, the three years. And so they give you a couple of bad days, but by the time you get down to the fourth, the idea is that means that there's a serious ozone problem there. And our numbers are going down. I mean, there's reason to think that we're making some progress, but it's very weather dependent, and it's also mm -hmm. dependent on what people do. So in those really hot days when uh, people may hear on the news that we're on an ozone alert day, those are the types of days that we're concerned about. And another factor that we haven't talked about is our wind is generally helpful. But if you have those very still days when it's very, very hot, those are the days when our air suffers. That's exactly right. That's when the pollutants we create just sit here and uh, fester. <laughs> Doug, uh, tell us what it means uh, to central Oklahoma to be uh, designated as non-attainment. Well, it really could mean a number of things. I mean, I, you know, ideally, you know, you certainly don't want to be in non-attainment. Um, if we do end up being declared non-attainment, if we have a bad summer this year, it could mean a number of things. Um, it actually could mean p some penalties from, from the federal government with regards to um, the amount of federal monies that flow into this region. If we're not able to show, if we cannot develop a plan to bring ourselves back into attainment. Um, we have three years in which to do that, but uh, if we're not able to do that, you know, show that we can bring ourselves back into attainment by um, imposing certain measures upon ourselves, um, you know, then you can see, you know, a real stagnant amount of money that would flow into this area. In particular, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I have more of a background in the transportation sector. Um, it's, quite, it's quite likely that if we can't show that we can comply with the standard that we would, that our transportation funding, federal transportation funding, could freeze or be, be greatly limited. So, Well, just how much can an individual community or a, 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 an area like central Oklahoma do to, to change uh, what level it's reaching? Well, it's a great question because, um, you know, as Miles said, you know, a lot of our ozone, it's really predicated on weather conditions. Um, this past two summers prior to this one, we actually had some pretty good weather in that it did not generate the conditions which are right for the formation of ozone. Um, in in uh, 2006, we had a fairly bad summer, which, and actually the weather condition of forecast for this upcoming season. Uh, summer is uh, supposed to be similar to what it was in 2006, so we're very concerned about it from that point. However, um, there are days throughout the summer which are, are ripe for the formation of ozone, and we, in partnership with the Oklahoma uh, Department of Environmental Quality, we call what we call ozone alert days. And we ask that uh, residents of central Oklahoma do their part to, um, you know, to help us relieve the amount of ozone on those days. Do such things as um, you know, delay mowing your lawn. Uh, you know, I, that always seems to be uh, 
uh, one that people have really hit I've on. I've never thought that was a bad idea. <laughs> on a hot <laughs> no day, doubt. it's an easy sell. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, refuel your vehicles at night because, you know, it's during the daylight hours that ozone really starts to perk. And that really does make a difference? It sure does. Definitely does. Because when, you, when you're pouring, you know, gas into your vehicle, it releases a lot of vapors. Um, there's benzene, for example, as part of that, those vapors that are released. Um, so if we can do that at night during the non-daylight hours, it certainly helps. Miles, let me ask you a, hist a historical question. It seems to me like back in the 1970s, air was much worse than it is now. And I bring that up, first validate that if you would, but then also I don't want people to get the impression that the, the air is getting dirtier and dirty when in fact we've made some great strides from when the four of us were children and, and, and uh, there, were, there were less uh, stringent uh, rules on automobiles and a lot of other factory uh, considerations. Oh, there's no question that nationally the air is much better now than it was. So and it is better. It is better. We, yeah. And um, we've got the, our challenge in Oklahoma City is that, uh, that we, what has changed is we're a bigger city. And in some ways, you know, uh, non-attainment is like, I don't know, it's like acne or something. You know, you <laughs> reach a certain point of maturity and, um, and, and you then have to deal with the fact that just through your sheer size, there's, there are problems associated with it that you're going to have to address. Mm -hmm. Well, you, Doug, you uh, mentioned uh, two or three factors that uh, feed into uh, attainment or non-attainment or high ozone. Sure. Just in about 30 seconds, can you give us what those two or three factors are? Well, it really, in order for ozone to form, um, you obviously need bright sunlight that we have plenty of during the summer. You also have to have what they call the precursors to emission, uh, to, uh, to ozone. And that comes from a variety of sources, such as mobile sources is our major source of ozone in central Oklahoma. Mobile sources meaning basically cars and trucks, as well as lawnmowers and whatever else. Um, so if you have light winds, bright sunlight, temperatures mid-90s, that is the perfect formula for the cooking of ozone. Okay. And uh, we have it. We get okay. those high pressure systems that just sit on us and cook during the summer. And, and uh, hopefully we can get that Oklahoma wind blowing here soon. Let me jump in and get us to a break. We're discussing air quality in central Oklahoma. We'll be right back. I'm Major Matthew Newmeyer, currently stationed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas and I'm a Chickasaw. In 2003, when I was part of the drive to Baghdad, I found being a soldier was gonna be a lot more than just firing your weapon and being in a combat situation. Being a warrior, but also being the good citizen, that is probably why American soldiers are so respected. Because here are 18 to 20 year olds, one minute, they're in combat, people are shooting at them. The next minute, they're treating children just as if they were in their own home. That warrior ethos that the Chickasaws had uh, also translates directly to what you do as a soldier. Strength, integrity, uh, the grace, and the idea that you're part of a greater community, that you give to that community, uh, that you find it important to be the best you can be at what you're doing. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're discussing air quality in central Oklahoma with a couple of experts. Miles, uh, we've heard of something called the Central Oklahoma Regional Advocacy Alliance. What is that? 
Well, it's a mouthful, uh, and you can call it Cora <laughs> if it's easier. That's Cora. Right. Cora. That is easier. I wish I'd, I wish I'd known that before I, 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 I spelled it out. Well, you did a darn good job. I just uh, wanted to see if you could say it. <laughs> well, the, you know, just as um, Doug represents ACOG, which is an association of governments in central Oklahoma, Cora is an association of chambers of commerce, basically, in hmm. central Oklahoma. And the idea is that these air quality problems don't respect city uh, limits at all. In fact, they don't really uh, respect state borders. I mean, the, uh, they, uh, the uh, pollutants overlap, go from one place to another, and because EPA is going to be looking at declaring non-attainment if it happens, not in Oklahoma City, not in Oklahoma County, but in the metropolitan area, depending on exactly how it defines it, that's a problem that we all face. And so Cora um, is designed to address regional problems like that. Hmm. Miles, I know that uh, in addition to the private practice that you've had in this area, you've also been Secretary of Environment under Governor Brad Henry. How did that experience uh, help you in dealing with the kind of issues that you're dealing with here? Well, what it's done, I think, for me is that it's, you know, it's stressed the importance of, uh, of coordinated action. I mean, you know, that our opportunity to address ozone in Oklahoma, in central Oklahoma, is really an opportunity to shave off the very worst days. I mean, we'll be okay if we can reduce just the very worst days. And there are opportunities for governments, for companies to voluntarily take steps to make that happen. Um, and if we can do that together voluntarily, we can avoid kind of the heavier handed regulatory outcome. Let me ask you a follow up to that. Is there any kind of reward to the business uh, that uh, monetary or otherwise that takes voluntary steps to try to reduce it? Well, the, the, the main reward is to, is avoiding uh, operating in an environment which would be out of attainment, but, but there is no direct reward from the government for doing it. Well, Doug, that's kind of where you come in because uh, you, you work for the uh, Association of Central Oklahoma Governments, which represents the city of Oklahoma City, but also many other municipalities in the region, and, and we all have a stake in this. Uh, what's your role and, and how is the effort going to get the other municipalities along with Oklahoma City um, fired up about this? Right. Well, the simple fact that we do represent so many constituents, I think that it's good that we're at the table and we certainly will be. We're walking hand in hand with the Oklahoma Department of Envir Environmental Quality as well as the regional chambers and trying to get really get the message out about exactly, you know, you know what the ramifications are of fa falling into non-attainment. Um, we've re also been involved since the, since the late 60s in transportation planning, regional transportation planning. So we're very aware that if we do fall into non-attainment, you know, of, of the likelihood or at least, you know, the, the fear that we could lose some transportation funding. So we want to make sure that we're at the table and are helping to mitigate the problems that we currently have. Um, but, you know, we really have been playing the role of an educator uh, with this issue. We've had a comprehensive public, uh, public education campaign since 1997. Um, you know, we, we help, well, as I mentioned earlier, call the Cleaner Alert Days. We also, for anybody who wants additional information, I would encourage them to uh, check our website, our air quality website, at getsquare.org. We have a lot of useful tips there with regards to energy efficiency. Um, as well as the tips on cleaner alert day. So I would encourage anyone. Let me have that repeated. Get square. Get square dot org. Okay. Sounds good. Miles, how concerned uh, thus far uh, uh, we've come in uh, this summer, uh, pretty hot summer, how concerned should the business community in central Oklahoma be about what's going on? Well, I think they should be pretty concerned. I mean, we really are just about um, on the razor's edge of going into non attainment. We've had um, some alert days already this summer. We haven't had any uh, violations, so we're, but that really means that we're four days away from being in violation, pot uh, potentially. If four we, strikes in your app. Four strikes in your app. And <laughs> if we are, uh, and if we do go into non-attainment, it's going to be a serious deal for industry. I mean, who bears... Why? Well, the, under the Clean Air Act, which is what drives all of this, the Federal Clean Air Act, um, what happens is once you go into non-attainment, there are new rules that are put into place, and the state has to craft a plan, a state implementation plan for addressing the problem, and that has some mandatory components. And the, the critical ones are really ones that affect what we would like to see most, which is expansions of businesses and new businesses coming in. And those new businesses are going to face essentially the toughest standards that, that are anywhere in the country for the kind of control equipment they put in. And then there's this phenomenon we talked about earlier because of having to not just have really, really clean emissions, but have to offset your emissions. 
Um, and so you've got to, not only do you have to put on expensive equipment, but if you want to put on 100 tons of pollutants in the air, you've got to find somebody else in the area that's taking 110 pollutants out. Um, and that is, that is a real burden. And it's not the end of the world. There are, there are you know, plenty of cities that are, doing, that are prospering despite this, but it's, it is a drag on the economy and it's absolutely worth avoiding. Let me ask you just to follow up on this. Yeah. Can you, if you know, kind of our surrounding major cities, uh, are they in attainment or non-attainment? For instance, uh, Tulsa, uh, Wichita perhaps, Kansas City and, and around. Can you tell uh, well, us about that? Uh, Tulsa is, uh, is in very much the same situation that Oklahoma City is, uh, which is just on the edge. Dallas is out of attainment. Uh, Kansas City is out of attainment. Um, Memphis is out of attainment. Um, I think so. It's really the, the sort of next, you know, the cities that are kind of one step larger tend to be out of attainment. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of our challenges is Dallas. I mean, they are. I mean, they. Uh, the wind frequently blows from the south in the summer, and it brings sometimes brings up um, ozone precursors from there. Well, and that is true. Because just let me add to that. Um, we have monitors down on the Red River, which quite frankly, I mean, there's not a lot of urban development down there, and those register some of our highest readings, where they are our, our highest readings in the state. So that would seem to indicate that, you know, that's coming from the other mm -hmm. side of the Red River. Well, let, let me just ask a question, since we have a, a legal expert on environment here. <laughs> we have seen situations where, where water comes from a river from one state to the other, and there's a lawsuit between this state and that state. Could you ever imagine a situation where one state takes a, a legal action against another state because of the air quality that it, it seems to be impeding? Yeah, that's a good question. There is, in fact, a procedure for doing that. You can petition the EPA to force specific sources in Texas. You couldn't just say Dallas is too smoggy, but you could, <laughs> I'll, you know, you could say it. But um, <laughs> if you wanted to win a court case, you'd have to identify the specific sources which were the problem. Um, and so that's a possibility. I mean, I think we need to recognize that, that we have things we can do here as well to help solve the problem. But, right. but there, it's clear that part of, the, you know, of what might push us over the limit could come up from Dallas. Well, if, if that's true, if, if Dallas is that metro area is impacting our, then I would think the air quality in Dallas must be really bad. I mean, is, <laughs> is, is that accurate? I mean, is, is there, is, well, are they really, really is. In, in having trouble? They, they really are. I mean, they're having trouble trying to comply with the old standard, let alone the new standard that was implemented, which is more stringent, which was, a, uh, which was introduced last, last right. spring. Um, so yeah, they have significant issues. There are categories of non-attainment. And there's kind of a running joke in the field, you know, there's moderate, which we would probably be the least restrictive. Moderate, serious, severe, extreme, and, and LA. That's always kind of been the running joke. So Dallas is somewhere in between extreme and LA. Well, uh, let, me, let me ask the producer, how much time do we have left? One minute left. Uh, Miles, how do you want to wrap up this show? What, what would you like people to know? Um, this, that there is still an opportunity to avoid going out of attainment. And that's, and it, it, our individual decisions this summer will make the difference. And so listen to those ozone alert days. I mean, I mean, don't mow your yard that day, please, you know, and, um, and take the steps that are available on, on uh, the website because really if we just shave a few percentages off our emissions on those days, we'll make it through this summer. All right, Doug, we have right. a few seconds left. Well, I'm just gonna say, we, you know, we're going through somewhat of a renaissance here in, in our region right now, and we don't wanna slow that momentum. Certainly the programs throughout, such as MAPS in particular, have done tremendous amount for our region, and we don't wanna slow that progress and, by going into non-attainment, so. All right. Doug Rex is, Rex is with ACOG and uh, Miles Tolbert in, in private practice, but uh, still very much involved in the, the state's environmental issues. Both, thanks to both of you for coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for Thank you, sir. Very much appreciate it. Kent and I'll be back with a final word right after this. It's time to meet the new people in power. The people responsible for our energy future. It's you. It's me. All of us together. From now on, we're, we're the, the people, people in power. power. og &E will supply the power. It's how we apply the power that counts. We've got to use electricity smarter. Wiser. Cleaner. Better. So we've got to be informed, equipped, prepared. Committed. From now on. Look, nobody wants to waste energy. Nobody wants to build new power plants. Nobody wants to pay more for electricity. But nobody wants to give up their way of life. We don't have to. If we just use positive energy together.
I'll take advantage of off-peak hours. That means cutting energy use from 1 to 7 every day. Every day. I'm going to sign up for more and more wind power. We'll take advantage of the high-tech tools coming soon from OG&E. OG&E can't do it alone. It's you and OG&E working together. Find dozens of ways you can help at OGE.com. A positive energy future is in our power. Together. It's all your power. What would you do? comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political, government, and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers back to wrap up a show on the verdict. We've been discussing air quality with Doug Rex and Miles Tolbert today. Yes, very glad to have those fellows on. Uh, they're doing a grand job in what could be a serious problem for central Oklahoma, but uh, I think they've got a good handle on it. And if viewers would like more information, we have some website information that'll give you just that. First of all, there's some general information at a website called getsquare.org. And then we mentioned there's a clean air forum held recently at Oklahoma Christian University. You can download a video of uh, some segments of that forum if you go to the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce's website, and that web address is okcchamber.com. And of course, anytime you can go to our website, theverdict.tv, tell us about a show that you'd like to see discussed right here on The Verdict. For Kent, I'm Mick. We'll see you next week on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.